The horror of your soul as you embrace a biblical false history that was forced into the Philippines history as part of colonialism of the past. Ophirians, definition. Poorly done, but here we go. It's a group of people who've decided that for ideological and political reasons within the Philippines, and usually really outside of the Philippines, for various reasons, they have decided on a central conceit or fact that they're going to promote no matter how absolutely cockamamie it is. They not only will sit down and deadass misquote the Bible while claiming to be uh, ideologically pure or whatever, or quote it out of context, or just ignore it outright and just say something and say it's in the Bible, to try to say that they are either the most ancient society on the planet for some reason, okay, or say that they're in the Bible, okay, or say that they are proving that they're in the Bible because they are the chosen population that was referred to as name that group, and or that in the Bible it says there's some place on earth with literally mountains of gold or some other fantasy stuff that never actually was true, and it has to be them because and then they misquote somebody's assertion in the past that isn't really history on a pathway how to find Ophir, which is the reason we call them Ophirians. And it's a list of instructions on how to go to Ophir that goes past the Philippines and up towards Japan. But they'll misquote it because it mentions the Philippines, therefore it, it's saying nothing but the Philippines. they will say, yeah, I know what it said, but... Over here is another line. It's like, no, no, no. Do you acknowledge that it points away from the Philippines? Yeah. Okay, then why are you using it at all? Because there's this other passage over here. Yeah, but it's not in the same book and it's not by the same person. This person is telling you that the Philippines isn't Ophir. Why do people do this? Okay, let's explain colonialism and its effect on history. Or more accurately, historical revision and why you shouldn't do it ever. Even if it makes you feel like you're morally and legally just by lying about the history of your Nazi government, don't do it. For two reasons. Most people who do this sort of thing do it as an expedient way to get away with winning some stupid argument. They just lie about history because they know you can go look it up and then they make up a very convoluted stack of stories that gets even more deep where they bury themselves under lie after lie after lie about what their motivations were, eventually forgetting why they did this. That is one of the big pitfalls for doing this. But they keep trying to prop up literally something they said two years ago. They've even forgot why they said it sometimes. Or in this case, uh, running a scam where you're saying, give me some money and I'll give you gold someday. Or whatever it is this week. It could be anything. But what is this really based on? Well, I'm, I'm blaming colonialism. Actual colonialism was based on going into a population, according to their own assertion, destroying their history and culture and replacing it with another culture, making them part of the population that was colonizing. And then when they're done with them after uh, mining the area or taking people and slaving them or stealing all the food or, or taking their land and kicking them off onto a smaller island over here somewhere. Once they're done with the area or they find that they can't keep their colonialism-based economy or empire sustained, that's a lot of them. Actually, all empires fall that way. They can't sustain themselves. Once that happens, they leave, but they leave behind them the tatters of colonialism by you being told, believe the history we gave you in spite of the fact that you can easily someday double-check this by digging up ruins. Look under the rice paddies. Look under your farmland. Dig out the rest of that mine shaft. You might find proof of your ancestry. This is absolutely how people find things out. Well, let's go dig where the mine was. Maybe we can find some useful metal. We found some artwork. Hey, some pottery. There isn't any gold here. Maybe they were trying to destroy our history. Well, that's a conspiracy theory, but okay, let's go with that. So instead of embracing your ability, your empowerment, to say, fuck the whole world, we're going to find out what our history is by digging it up. The Philippines is a fairly large area. You could do this. Many of the things that were used by the Filipinos were things that would decay over time, that would break down. They used natural materials, but not all of it was that way. 
Most information we have about our history in lands run by the Celts, for instance, was because they mummified the bodies or things got buried in peat or something. So you'd look for the conditions you would in archaeology to find this. Not every piece of dirt in the Philippines was dug up and sifted to remove everybody's history. But when someone digs up a Laguna copper plate showing you that your history of your language and some of your culture is a melting pot from several different cultures, instead of paying attention to a rich history that essentially means that the Philippines may have been the culmination of dozens of different societies where they may have run to for refuge, you decide there's gold in them Thar Hills and throw all that shit in the garbage. You literally dead-ass lie about crap. You embrace an actual propagandist who worked during the propaganda era of the Philippines when they were trying to find themselves. You embrace a dictator that established literal martial law and wouldn't let you vote against him. But, but he's, he's your favorite now. He's the, he's the product of colonialism, too. You are the product of colonialism. The United States is the product of colonialism, but it is a melting pot. Our Americanness has nothing to do with the Native Americans, although I sometimes wish it did, or African slaves that eventually became Americans. It's a horrible history, but someone walking around right now running a business probably shouldn't consider themselves slave. Uh, most people who came to the United States at one point, and for the majority of its time, were running away from everybody and being refugees. But there's an entire political party lying about it, saying American exceptionalism can't be based on the dregs of the world. Give us your poor, your hungry, your unwashed. Apparently, an entire political party fucking ignores this. Revisionism doesn't benefit anybody because you're pissing off the majority of us that are proud of the fact that our ancestors dug ourselves up out of the shit. Ex-slaves dug themselves out of the shit. Poor people, convicts. You're not a convict if, you're if your granddad was a convict. We, the people, ruled and overruled all of this, you'd still get people saying, well, you're of low birth. Yeah, but the reason you're not speaking German and goose-stepping is because this country, Russia, China, and everybody else fought a war that your ass didn't have anything to do with. So me of low birth. Oh, wait a minute. I only hear that in a couple of Polynesian countries. You don't hear that from Japanese much. They would say that kind of stuff. The Japanese lost the Second World War. Uh, basically, everybody who lost to the dregs of humanity, and even the Russians would have to say, yeah, it was the uh, proletariat that won. So the Chinese. This whole power to the people thing, even though both of those countries pervert the shit out of it, beat the crap out of imperialism, empires, colonies. The only exception was, well, Britain, but again, they lost us. They lost Australia. They lost Canada. No, it wasn't really an agreement with Canada either. These old shitty methods for human beings being ruled by each other don't work. And now you've got people in the United States that don't like that for the umpteenth time in the state of Oregon, we the people voted for a speed limit. They want to speed and say, I'm a sovereign citizen. Yeah, sit in jail and yell it all you want. You're not getting out until you knock the shit off. And you don't get a license anymore. No, it's not a travel permit. That's different. You can travel. You're stuck on a 50cc motorcycle or a bike. And you know what they do? They do the same as everybody else. They get a law passed that says you're allowed to ride a bicycle on roads that were illegal at one point by allowing those liberal, commie, socialist white lines so there would be a shoulder. And it's not just a shoulder. It's a bike lane now. Goddamn liberals ruining our bike. Yeah, but when you lose your right to drive because you drunk drive, you get to ride a bike now. It's also something called a sidewalk to work with. Well, you can't ride your bike on the sidewalk. You won't let her ride our, us ride our bikes anywhere, is the code word or the coded language. 
we the people in the state of Oregon decided that you can ride anywhere you want to. There's no law in the state of Oregon that says you can't ride your bike on the sidewalk. If you don't want us riding on the sidewalk, put in a bike lane. Well, we don't want one. Don't fucking care. Pick one or the other. Freedom of travel. Freedom of movement. <laughs> Guess that's a bowel movement joke. So let's get back to the uh, Ophirians putting themselves in shackles and saying, yes, sir. You want your old dictator back? Potato penis dictator? You want him back because it was actually better than. Yes, having a dictatorship. Sometimes the dictator finds out about we the people again and gets threatened with not being overthrown but drawn and quartered. And yeah, Ferdinand Marcos actually did improve the situation sometimes because he had to because the majority of the population going hungry equals let them eat cake while I die. So, yeah, no matter if it's a dictatorship, it's really still the same mob mentality, human nature. So, you're embracing a different culture's Bible. And if you're not aware of it, that's what they're doing. And it's a Bible that contains a history that isn't confirmable outside of the Bible in most cases. But not all. Some of it is confirmable. It does actually have facts in it. But you're embracing this history. Adopting a new God, even. Adopting Christ. Adopting the belief system of the people that enslaved the Philippines. Originally. Because someone said you can go get free gold from, from somebody. You're willing to throw out a history you haven't even dug up yet because for a few pieces of gold. Do not comment, rate, subscribe, hit the bell, or share. Don't have to give a shit what I have to say. You don't even have to read the title. You don't have to do anything with this video. But if you know somebody who's fallen into this uh, jingoistic trap, Explain it to them. These short-term solutions for lying about your history destroys it. 